hi everyone thanks for coming back for part four so the point that I was trying to make in my last video is there seems to be three numbers associated with the head of the corner okay, I believe the most important number is the number that represents 2017 which is the year that we're still in we're still in the 2017 year the 2017 year um, based on the Gregorian calendar since it starts with year one and not year zero this is the 2017 year that we're in and but the number for head of the corner begins with 2776 and so that would represent the Hebrew year 5776 or 2016 and then the next number is 2777 which would represent the year 2017 or the Hebrew year 5777 and then the next number is 2778 which would represent the year that we're in technically which is the Hebrew year 5778 and the year 2018 on the Gregorian calendar and this word means census which I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about because that factors into the imagery as well and so I've talked about how the number 27 is short for 2017 represents the Hebrew year 5777 and so 26 would represent the year 2016 or the Hebrew year 776 Okay, so the point that I want to make is that all three years seem to reflect the head of the corner, 776, which is the height of the One World Freedom Tower, which is Satan's version of the head of the corner, which I can talk a little bit more about that perhaps in another video. But we also have the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is 5776. So that seems to represent the head of the corner. But then we also have the year 2017, which is the year that we're currently in. And so that's the most important year. And that's represented by the Strong's number G2777. This is the word for little head. This is a word that I've talked a lot about in the iPet Goat movie, and I still have a lot more to share about that. But it also means the highest part, extremity of anything, the capital of a column or a pillar, which I want to talk a lot more about. But again, I'll have to get into it a little more in another video since I'm already into the fourth video with trying to explain this but it also means the tips or knobs of a wooden rod that the parchments were rolled on because they resembled little heads and it's also the roll of a book. Okay, I've also talked about how the number 26 is the number for Yahweh. It's the tetragrammaton yod hey vav hey and so it's a, the number for God or the number for Yahweh in the Hebrew it's the geometric number or value and it's also the strongest number for the word agape in the Greek which means love and so and so the point that I'm trying to make is that I believe all three numbers are represented with the head of the corner I believe the head represents God the Father is represented by the number 26 or the Hebrew year 5776 which matches the height of the pyramid or the number 1776 which is the the height of the One World Freedom Tower and with the Strong's number 2776 in the in the Greek for the word head so all these seem to match up with the, the head and then you have the number 27 in the middle which represents the the consummation of the covenant basically which I'll talk more about but that's represented by the the number 27 and so I'll have to explain that a little bit more later 
but the number 27 represents man jesus is the son of man he's god in the flesh that that came as man and he's the bridegroom and he's the one that's going to consummate the covenants that's why i believe he's represented by the number 27 and that's why i believe the number 27 represents the consummation of the covenant Okay, and then you have the number 28, which would represent the base. I believe it also represents the, the ending or the actual height of the pyramid because God tells us the end from the beginning. And the very first verse in the Bible has 28 letters. I've also talked about Strong's number 2018 that comes up in the second verse of the Bible where God brings forth waters upon the earth i believe that's referring to the living waters i can talk a little bit more about that in another video but you so the number 28 would also represent the holy spirit also matches up with acts 1 8 and 2 and 2 18 when the holy spirit comes down so i believe that 26 represents god the father 27 represents god the son 28 represents God the Holy Spirit and then 28 would also include the bride because the bride is filled with the Holy Spirit okay so that's why I believe the bride is represented here in Genesis 2 8 which comes right after Genesis 2 7 where God creates man and then he plants man in the garden of Eden and in song of songs the garden is referred to as the the spouse of the bridegroom and then over here in genesis 2 17 where god said to not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil the very next verse he says god god says that it's not good for man to be alone i will make a help meet for him it's also in revelation 18 verse 23 which is interesting that it comes up in verse 23 but that's where it says the light of a candle shall shine no more in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were great men of the earth and for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived and it was in verse 23 where adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man and of course this is what jesus says to the church as well in ephesians 5. okay so i've explained before why i believe this is a representation of the key of david and jesus is the key of david and so i'll just quickly read that scripture again Okay, it's in Isaiah 22, 22. The book of Psalms is the 22nd book of the Bible, and 22 is a number having to do with DNA. It's the number of autosomes in the human body. And so those would be the, the chromosomes that are shared. The 23rd chromosome would be the sex chromosome, so that would be different for the female or the male. But the 22 would all be shared, would be the same with Christ and over here it says and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut and he shall shut and none shall open and I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house okay so to make it short that's what I believe the throne of Saint Peter represents I believe it it's a representation of Jesus and I'm not sure how well you can see the image here I can try to back it up a little bit and show you this image if you can see it a little bit better okay so when I made this music video I wanted to show the bigger picture of what's being represented with the, the Vatican and I'll try to explain it more in another video because I don't have time to go over all the details. But basically, I believe there there is a bigger picture that's being represented. And the key of David, the true key of David, is Jesus. Jesus is the, the key to the kingdom of God. Okay, so it kind of bothered me that this imagery over here is located in the mouth of the serpent. Because as I stated i believe this represents jesus and so i knew there had to be a bigger picture and 
then it dawned on me that the bigger picture is something that I've already shown before and again I can't go into all the details but okay the bigger picture is Acts 27 which is something that I've talked about before and so it just dawned on me that the entire Vatican is located in Italy and Italy is where Paul was sailing to in, in Acts 27 and I made videos explaining how I believe this is a representation of the consummation of the covenant that's when I discovered what honey represents when they escape to the island of Melita which means honey in the Greek and so I did several videos about this around the time of Christmas it was the same time that the around the time that the replica of Noah's Ark was loosed and it crashed into a bay which was exactly what's being represented in Acts 27 and there was also the the um, SpaceX rocket launch which a lot of people thought looked like the sign of Jonah but I made videos about how I believe it looked more like a sperm just like the the island of Malta looks like a sperm and so this was all a representation of the consummation of the covenant and all those things happened those signs occurred during that time and so I made a video explaining how I came to understand what the honey represents. Okay, I also talked about the Strong's number 2778 and how it's the meaning for the word tribute as in paying tribute to Caesar. It's the, the word for coin. And I've talked about how this is a foreshadow of the mark of the beast and it's interesting that it comes up in verse 17 it's also in Matthew 17 verse 27 which again I believe that represents this year but I had made some videos around the time of March 17th around the time of St. Patrick's Day when the Google Doodle came out with the shark and the the hook and I explained how I believe that the shark is also a representation of the fish swallowing up the the currency which is a representation of the the mark of the beast and so the fish the great fish is also a representation of Jesus because the word um, ichthys is a an anagram for the word Jesus Jesus Christ son of God another thing that I came across recently and I'll just try to make this short I can go into more details another time but I noticed over here the word dragon it says and thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trump, trample under foot and I noticed the word dragon is the word tanin in the Hebrew which means dragon serpent but it also means sea monster Okay, and if you look at the story of Jonah in the Old Testament, which is interesting that it comes up in Jonah 1.17, this is where Jonah got swallowed by a big fish. And if you look at the word for fish in the Greek, it's actually the word cetus, as in the constellation cetus, it's the word gitus in the Greek, but this is a constellation cetus. Okay, and I've shown this imagery before. This is cetus, a sea monster, and you can see that Andromeda which represents the bride is chained to the the sea monster actually she's also attached to Pisces the fish which also represent the bride and they're bound by these two cords which I've explained before I believe this represents DNA strands and the chains that, that she's bound with represent the, the chains of iron that the Bible talks about it's a representation of DNA and you have Aries the ram here cutting the cords and freeing Andromeda which represents the bride Okay, so I think that explains why Jesus is inside the mouth of the serpent because the serpent is the same as the sea monster and this is the, the sign of Jonah that 
Jesus would be in the heart of the earth just as Jonah was in the sea monster for three days and three nights. Okay, I still have a lot more to share, so I'll have to continue with more in the next video. Thanks for watching.